What's going on YouTube? JT is your born here with another MonsterVerse related video. It's been quite a bit since I feel like I've talked about the MonsterVerse. Not much news has happened really since Godzilla vs. Kong came out earlier this year. I mean, some news has been dropped. There's been a lot of speculation as to what's really next for the MonsterVerse itself because it has been confirmed that the MonsterVerse will be continuing in some sort of fashion. In fact, we have a Skull Island Netflix anime that was the only thing so far that's been a officially announced now we don't know exactly the details of it all we just know it's going to be an anime and it's going to be on netflix and it's going to be set in the monsterverse probably a few years before the big storm in godzilla vs kong but we are going to get that regardless or maybe even post godzilla vs kong it's all speculation uh the next thing that we heard about is that apparently adam wingard is in negotiations to make uh, another monsterverse film uh, a lot of speculation that it could be a kong related film set in the hollow earth because it's easier for them to make a kong movie as opposed to making a godzilla movie because with godzilla they're licensing out the character and there's a lot of legal and rights issues and hurdles that they have to go through to make a godzilla film and whereas with kong you can kind of just do something that's really kind of contained within the hollow earth because with godzilla versus kong we only got a taste of the hollow earth like we we, we explored it just briefly and we don't exactly know what is fully down there. I mean, we have an idea. We, we got to see a little bit of it. And it wasn't exactly what I was expecting the Hollow Earth to be like when the movie was announced. But the Hollow Earth was really cool. And I feel like there's just so much down there that we still haven't gotten a chance to look at. I mean, there's just hundreds and hundreds of miles down there that's worth exploring. In terms of the last thing that we've heard, uh, one of the writers from the MonsterVerse, Max Borenstein, most notably for writing Godzilla 2014 screenplay, working on Skull Island, worked on King of the Monsters a bit, and worked on Godzilla vs. Kong. He's worked on all of them. And in a quote from him, he said, I've heard some exciting things that are happening that I can't divulge. They have a great handle on things there. And I certainly have thoughts and am always excited when I get involved in them. I think it's in good hands with the success of Godzilla vs. Kong. There will be some new, interesting installments coming. So installments means plural, so multiple movies. Without being able to say anything of that officially, you can look at the fact that the film performed and people really responded to it. I think it was really wonderful timing for people to have that towards the end of that surge in the pandemic. People really felt eager to see something that was fun and joyful in the cinema, and it was really exciting to have our movie be that movie. So yes, Godzilla vs. Kong was a big success, especially given the circumstances. I consider it the savior of cinema. It brought movies back from you know just kind of being like dead i mean they had the hybrid release it was a success on hbo max it helps get a bunch of new subscribers to the format because again this you also have to factor in this was back in march when things were a lot more worse off in terms of the pandemic with things kind of surging a lot of theaters not fully opened up and stuff but things have kind of changed a bit like theaters kind of since then really kind of started to open up more fully and while the box office is not what it used to be, it definitely is an improvement over what happened in 2020. And we can thank Godzilla vs. Kong for giving the studios the confidence to release more content back into the theaters. Yeah, they still have the hybrid release, but at least for HBO Max, it's only supposed to be for this whole year. Um, and then they're going to switch back to strictly theatrical for next year. But it definitely is something worth noting. On to the next bit of this. Uh, what about Godzilla? So this video, I just wanted to focus on what is next for the monsterverse i mean we have all this news and speculation we know the skull island anime is happening we know wingard is apparently in negotiations and we know bornstein confirmed that there are more installments along the way i that that is definitely plural that means more movies we still have the anime uh will we get a monarch tv show it's all kind of up in the air speculation and one thing that's kind of got a lot of fans curious is godzilla because originally legendary's deal with Toho was for three films. We had Godzilla 2014, we had Godzilla King of the Monsters, and we had Godzilla vs. Kong. However, Toho has been very glad and very excited with their partnership with Legendary. They are pleased with it because thanks to Legendary, Godzilla is now more popular than ever before. Yes, Godzilla was always big with fans beforehand, but Legendary helped make the character with their movies a lot more popular thanks to the 2014 film success, King of the Monsters, and now Godzilla vs. Kong. Godzilla is more popular than ever before now. Uh, kids today are growing up seeing Godzilla for the first time thanks to these movies. It has been a very successful deal for Toho. And with Legendary doing their thing with Godzilla, it's allowing Toho to be a lot more experimental with their Godzilla product. I mean, we had Shin Godzilla, which was a big success in Japan, I think even winning Best Picture. 
and we had the Godzilla anime trilogy, which didn't quite deliver for a lot of people, but at least had a unique vision. And then on top of that, we just had Godzilla Singular Point, which was very creative and inventive with a lot of things it did with the Godzilla lore, and it's been a success on Netflix. So Godzilla is just kind of all over the place now. We're getting so much Godzilla content. It truly is wonderful. Plus, you have IDW making some Godzilla comics. Legendary has made some comics for the MonsterVerse. So it's a good time to be a Godzilla fan. Although now that a lot of that stuff's kind of just been released, now we're in the post, what's next for the franchise? I mean, Singular Point Season 2 is pretty much a given. But with the MonsterVerse, it's kind of all up in the air. But I'm going to go on a limb and say that Godzilla will be back. Um, there's there's no way it's going to end with Godzilla vs. Kong. Because it doesn't really feel like a finale type movie. Like, it feels like a good closure maybe for Kong. But for Godzilla, it feels like a lot of it was kind of rushed and brushed over in the final film there's some good stuff in there but it feels like Godzilla in some ways kind of got the short end of the stick in that movie and a lot of that is speculated to be because Godzilla vs. Kong was massively retooled before its final release in fact there's all sorts of videos and stuff out there like I've done some videos with Kaiju Network talking about how Godzilla vs. Kong has like what like 30 to 40 minutes of deleted scenes apparently and Wingard talked about this before but we don't know entirely what's in those deleted scenes we know the Mothra twins were originally supposed to be in it we know the original opening was supposed to be on skull island with the disaster of everyone trying to dig into hollow earth we know that there is also a deleted scene that showed nathan lynn meeting ren sarazawa drunk in a bar before obviously the reshot scene where he's at the university and we had ren sarazawa we had the head of apex walter simmons and we had nathan all kind of talking about getting a journey to like go inside hollow earth so a lot of that movie was definitely caught in fact one of the other deleted scenes was this scene here, I got the image pulled up right here, was the portrait in the cave. And with the portrait in the cave, it shows the Kong species and the Godzilla species teaming up to fight some sort of monster of sorts. It's almost like a Godzilla with wings, which some people have speculated could be like the equivalent to the MonsterVerse version of Space Godzilla. Why they cut this, I'm not exactly sure, because I, I feel like with Godzilla vs. Kong, a lot of the setup and the world building was kind of cut short to make it just under two hours, to make it kind of like a non-stop action movie of sorts. And it's still a very entertaining movie, but I still want to know more about the lore. So a lot of this lore was clearly cut out. A lot of the stuff with the characters was certainly cut down for the human elements including uh madison's ptsd so there's a lot of it which was definitely trimmed out in fact ren serizawa who was the son of arguably the most important character within the MonsterVerse, uh dr ishiro serizawa he his story is pretty much like non-existent like we know he's his son but it's never fully said in the movie but in the deleted scene you you can see him talking to nathan about how his father was you know ishiro serizawa so i feel like a lot of that connection was kind of brushed over a bit. And it also leaves me kind of curious, like where did the second Ghidorah skull come from? Because they mentioned in the movie that obviously Ren's piloting Mechagodzilla in Ghidorah skull, but apparently there's supposed to be another one psychically linked inside Mechagodzilla. I don't know like how that works. I think that's kind of maybe an error on their part, or maybe there is another skull out there somewhere that we're not aware of. Maybe they fought somewhere else, or maybe they found a way to kind of regrow or mimic it. There's a lot of speculation as to what could be in the deleted scenes. And there's also rumors that Godzilla apparently in the original ending was like wearing mechanized armor. I guess one of the people who worked on the movie said it was and now they were saying it was a joke. Um, I don't exactly know. I just know we had this toy of Mega Godzilla. Why that was there, I have absolutely no clue because the other toys tie into the movie somehow, but that somehow doesn't. And there's also rumors and speculation that there was a post credit scene, but they cut it from the movie where they were teasing alien invasion as the next thing. And that can kind of go into like what's going on with the mural here where it's Godzilla and Kong teaming up to fight some sort of threats. So why they cut this from the movie, I don't exactly know. Maybe they're kind of tweaking things. Maybe it got Justice leaked and they weren't sure if they're going to get like a follow-up movie. So they're like, okay, we'll just kind of find a way to kind of rework this movie and wrap it around. Because Wingard, even in the commentary, is talking about how there's been reshoots and how he kind of carefully, meticulously kind of edited the movie to make it flow the way it did. And kudos to them. They found a way to make it successful. But I still want to know what were in those deleted scenes. So hopefully one day we'll be able to see them or we can just maybe read a script that explains exactly everything that was deleted no bullshit so there's that now this next part of the video i want to go ahead and explain what exactly i want to see next for the monsterverse so here's my little bullet points let's kind of go through them one by one so number one more of the hollow earth explored and exploring the monsters 
more as characters. Expand upon the lore. My biggest complaint with Godzilla vs. Kong, the fact that we didn't really expand too, too much on the lore, and I think that was probably in the original version of the movie, but they obviously cut it down. Like, what is this ancient war between the Godzilla and Kong species? What's with this giant mural of the Godzilla and Kong species fighting some sort of creation? Maybe that's, like, supposed to be foreshadowing for the final scene of the movie. In fact, there's even deleted tracks that were released about the mural, which is obviously, like, the big, huge wall painting. Because clearly, they film more scenes of them exploring, like, inside of Kong's lair. What is this? Like, I have to know more about it. What do the characters think of it? Like, my god, there's some more else out there or something like that. So, I think exploring the monsters as characters is kind of a big one. Now, one of the speculated titles for the next MonsterVerse movies is Son of Kong. And while I'm excited for that, I also think it's time to introduce the Son of Godzilla. Because Godzilla is a character that needs to be developed more as these movies continue onward. We had some good bits with him in 2014. We had some stuff in King of the Monsters, which I feel like fleshed him out kind of the most as a character. We had a nice kind of tender moment between him and a human. And then GVK, it's kind of brushed a bit aside. Yeah, we got to see more of his facial expressions. Like, Godzilla laughing was hilarious. But Godzilla as a character really kind of got pushed aside a bit more so for Kong. And Kong was great in GBK. I thought they developed him quite well. Giving him the ability for sign language, I think that's something actually really creative. But seeing Godzilla as a father is kind of the next evolution for the character that I want to see. Because Son of Godzilla, one of the best things about that movie is a lot of the nonverbal communication between Godzilla and his son Manila. There's, it's actually really relatable, and it actually has some really nice kind of tender moments between two monsters. The scene where they hug at the end, I think that's a very, like, touching, emotional scene. And some of my favorite scenes in that movie is just where Godzilla and Manila are just kind of, like, chilling out together, and it's so relatable. Without any dialogue, you can fully relate if you're a parent or you've seen kids and their, their fathers interacting like Manila playing with his tail, Godzilla teaching his son how to breathe fire. Just moments like that are, are a good way to kind of almost humanize Godzilla make him kind of more relatable as a character for the audience because Kong we definitely can he does the sign language he can communicate with humans and you can see the emotions in his eyes I feel like Godzilla needs moments like this too to expand upon his character maybe start to learn to care more for other monsters because Godzilla is more about the planet and Kong is more about the people and I feel like Godzilla can evolve a little bit to have a stronger connection with people. The best scene in the MonsterVerse is still that final scene between Dr. Sirizawa and Godzilla. I feel like Godzilla needs kind of more moments like that where he forms a closer bond with humanity. Because in GVK, it almost feels like that sacrifice didn't really carry as much weight in the version that we saw. Godzilla spent so much time connecting with humans based on the ending to that. And that sacrifice should have had more weight and meaning to it going forward. And I think it originally did, but they had to cut some scenes out. That's definitely something I want to see more of more developing their characters kong too seeing him as a parent he kind of already is a bit of a father figure at least to gia and i'd like to see gia return in future monster vs films i thought she was the strongest point of the human cast in godzilla vs kong by far there's actually a really nice touching relationship that she has with kong so i want to see that explored some more my next bullet point is better human storylines i think the strongest human cast and story kind of comes in kong skull island in gvk it's definitely gia storyline team Godzilla kind of gets brushed aside, but from what I gather, like it was originally supposed to deal more with Madison's PTSD in that. Uh, Monarch is kind of pushed aside and almost kind of absent throughout the whole movie. Yeah, they're technically responsible for the mission to Hollow Earth, but Monarch just feels like they take a bit of a backseat in Godzilla versus Kong. And I want to see Monarch expanded a bit more. I want to know more about the organization. I want to see what's going on with the Mothra twins. Yeah, like they were originally in the movie, but then their scenes got cut. What were those scenes? I want to see more of that lore expanded upon. One thing I actually think would be kind of an interesting thing to do is maybe kind of put Madison into the role of like a Mickey Saigusa of sorts, perhaps forming some sort of connection with Godzilla. Because to me, G and Kong have that bond equivalent. I feel like you should probably like if you're going to mirror their storylines, Madison should have that bond with Godzilla. I mean, she was like the one person who went out of her way to prove Godzilla's innocence. And Godzilla, yeah, he lost it because Apex was fucking around with things that they shouldn't have been messing around by creating Mecha Godzilla. So I feel like another way to kind of expand upon that connection, and I had this idea the other day when I was watching the movie. You know how in the film, Ren Serizawa is hooked up to that machine and he almost kind of drifts like Pacific Rim equivalent. He, he kind of forms like a mental connection with the Ghidorah skull to control Mecha Godzilla. Now imagine this, taking a device 
like that and like that advanced technology and linking a human with Godzilla. Maybe it's perhaps Madison. Kind of like the Project T-Bits from Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla where they try to like put a little device on Godzilla to kind of control him. Maybe this is a way you can develop Godzilla more and actually have him form a stronger connection with humans to communicate. We have the Orca, which was using their bioacoustics and a way to soothe the monsters and maybe get a reaction out of them. What if they use that Apex technology and they use it on Godzilla to form maybe a psychic link with him? I actually read, uh, what is it, the new Godzilla comic series by IDW that came out? And the ending had Mothra with the Mothra twins and some kids psychically communicate with Godzilla. I think that's a very fascinating idea. If humanity wants to kind of grow alongside Godzilla and like communicating with better, since Kong knows sign language, what if you can kind of do maybe a bit of a psychic link between humans and Godzilla as a means to kind of communicate? Perhaps we could even hear Godzilla speak. That would actually be kind of cool. Just a little idea I had to expand upon the characters more and maybe Godzilla can have a better understanding of humans and we can have a better understanding of him as a character. I think that would be something new and fresh to add to the series. So yeah, I think that would be an interesting human storyline to kind of go with. The next bit is the return of other Titans. Rodan and Mothra would have been cool to see a return. Rodan just kind of brushed aside. Like most of the Titans from GVK are kind of just forgotten about. I mean, we don't really necessarily know all that happened to them. Yeah, the opening credits just say defeated, defeated, defeated. But I want to know more about it. And Mothra, like her Mothra egg clearly was there. The original end credit scene of King of the Monsters was supposed to feature the Mothra egg and the twin fairies kind of singing to it. So I want to see Mothra return because Godzilla doesn't really have that connection with other monsters like he does with Mothra because there was a special link that they had in. There was kind of a nice little tender moment between two monsters that we saw in King of the Monsters. So I want to see Mothra return. I want to see Rodan return. And I think it would be cool to rebuild Mechagodzilla and maybe change the use of him from villainous to more heroic. I think it'd be cool to see the return of another Mecha. Another thing I'd like to see, classic Godzilla music brought back. I feel like one thing that was kind of lacking in GBK was Godzilla's theme music. Out of the four scores, the King of the Monsters by far has the best one. And then after that, I'd say 2014 is a runner up. And then third place, I'd say GBK. And then last place would be Skull Island score. I just feel like after we spent all this time trying to get his classic music back and it was so triumphant, it was so good when Baron McCreary did the music that it just felt like a step down in Godzilla vs. Kong. You had the rights to Godzilla's theme, why not just kind of use that one? Or even reuse the 2014 theme because I think it was a lot better. Classic Godzilla music needs to return. Now, other things I'd be interested in seeing, how about a MonsterVerse movie set in space or another planet? Because we know based on this universe that Ghidorah is an alien. Maybe it's from Planet X, maybe it's from some unknown reaches in the galaxy, but Ghidorah is confirmed to be an alien. That just opens up a whole new world. We're exploring the Hollow Earth now like where else do you go you go out into space now there's been kind of teases throughout the series of this kong skull island mentions exploring aliens and extraterrestrial life and even in this movie one of the lines that bernie says is the monarch facility at area 51 what could that possibly mean except aliens so i would like to see them go out into space maybe make like a space horror type movie or go to another planet or here's a crazy idea, maybe bringing Gamera to the MonsterVerse. Yeah, let's see Gamera. Gamera hasn't been seen in like 15 years in like anything outside of a short teaser, like 2015, but like in an actual movie. How cool would it be to have another movie set entirely on a different planet, but bring in Gamera? You can play around with the world. I hate to be like a Marvel comparison, but maybe do kind of like a Guardians of the Galaxy type thing where you have a Gamera film set on a completely different planet with, you know, different aliens of sorts kind of interacting. And then like there's some stuff that happens there. And then eventually like the end of the movie is them headed to Earth because of some sort of alien invasion or something. I don't know. There's a lot of potential ideas you can do with this, but I think a MonsterVerse movie set in space or on another planet would be a great way to expand the franchise and build upon the lore adding in some new alien species because the classic Toho films definitely brought in a lot of different various alien species to do battle on earth and that gives the humans something to conflict with and it gives the monsters some new opponents to battle like a Gigan or maybe a space Godzilla or um, pretty much whatever. Now next on the list is biologically created Titans. So in the MonsterVerse so far we had normal Titans like Godzilla and that and Kong, the Mutos, as opponents that just lived on Earth. Godzilla, King of the Monsters, introduced aliens with King Ghidorah coming to Earth, as it was explained. And Godzilla vs. Kong introduced us to mechas. So we had normal Earth-based Titans. We had a space 
titans and we had mechas what's left to do biologically created titans and this is where you can bring in something like a biolante or perhaps even a destroy us since you use the oxygen destroyer that goes back to the whole arrogance of man thinking that nature is in our control and they they mess around with things it's kind of like jurassic park where engine created these dinosaurs just because you could doesn't mean you should be tampering with things that you really have no control over so you can kind of bring that element to the story and even in king of the monsters was kind of talking about like all the different possibilities you can have with titan dna there's a lot of potential to create some new and dangerous titans or biological weapons and something along the lines with that biologically created titans would be something for sure more toho monsters is another thing i'd like to see and this kind of goes back to the other planets biologically created titans like destroya biolante would be a big one to do for sure and then other toho monsters like angerus like angerus would be cool to see because he's godzilla's best friend and buddy and he's really one of the originals who we haven't really seen in anything in so long so not counting godzilla's singular point but angerus would be cool to have or maybe like more mechas too like a jet jaguar would be kind of fun to see and one i would really like to see which kind of goes back into to the uh, biologically created ones are the gargantuas and you can also have that human connection like you have with Gia and Kong because Sanda like the brown gargantua definitely had a close relationship with humans and Gyra had this kind of vicious tendency towards humans so you can play around with that you can get a lot of emotions out of the monsters a lot of great visual storytelling with the creations and that's what I liked really a lot about the original War of the Gargantuas or like a Frankenstein type thing so I wouldn't necessarily go with the Frankenstein origin but you can play around with the gargantuas a bit and kind of do something crazy with that and then you can kind of wrap it all up in a big alien invasion destroy all monsters finale to kind of close off the series these are kind of my pitches of what i'd like to see um maybe you can get godzilla fighting gamera in there if you kind of bring in the destroy all monsters thing because if gamera is going to come from my idea from coming to space to earth godzilla is going to view him as a threat and we can kind of get that long-awaited fight that we've always wanted to see so yeah and then team ups obviously destroy all monsters i feel like destroy all monsters is kind of the quintessential way to kind of end this series maybe godzilla dies maybe kong dies i don't know i feel like that's kind of all you can really do with the monster risk i don't feel like godzilla vs kong feels like the big satisfying ending of sorts to this franchise i just don't feel like we're quite there yet i feel like there's more out there that we can still do with this series so i'm hopeful we can get at least a good maybe like three or four more movies kong movie godzilla movie space movie destroy all monsters that's what i do and maybe some animated series series and expanding on the lore in comic book form and fashion and all sorts of other things you can do with it so those are my thoughts on it i know i kind of made this video go on a little bit but it was kind of fun to do talking about various things within the monsterverse i'm very excited to see where they go from here hopefully we can get an announcement of sorts soon because we haven't really heard much about it i know they're working on stuff behind the scenes legendary is rumored to be like bought out by all sorts of different companies we'll just kind of see where they go from here but i, I do have faith that we will see godzilla and kong sharing the screen again the trailer for godzilla vs kong is now the most viewed warner brothers trailer in history on youtube it, it helped bring back the movie theaters it was a success on streaming uh it gave people the much needed escapism that they were kind of looking for and i just don't want to see the series end here in a film that just doesn't really feel like it has a finale type feel it feels like we're just kind of getting started we finally got the characters together now it's time to really kind of push the limits with these next couple films and then conclude the series on a high note so that's what i would do what are your thoughts on this how would you like to see the monsterverse continue do you like some of these ideas i kind of threw around here let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below be sure to hit that bell for notifications like this video share it with your friends subscribe to the youtube channel for more content as always take care now bye bye then and i will see you all in the next video Peace.